So there was no way I was going to make a video watching the world burn, watching the world burn July 13th, 2024. Uh, and of course, if, you, if you're if you living in a box, you, don't, you understand that the, Trump was just uh, almost assassinated. But I, I have to give this from a, a military perspective. Okay, uh, now, I want you to picture this. Now, you're sitting in a football stadium, and you're in the nosebleed seats, and, you know, it's 100 yards, and you're trying to watch the game, and uh, the, 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 the opposing team is on the opposite side of the field, and they're getting ready to score. And so what do you got? You got binoculars, man. You're trying, you're trying to see what the hell's going on. That's, that's 100 yards. All right. Now, as a as a sharpshooter in the Marine Corps, okay, I was hitting the dog target at 500 yards. So imagine five football stadiums uh, of of distance to be able to make a shot. All right. Okay. And and so all right. So let's get into it. So now we've got five football stadiums uh, away. Whoever made the shot, this, this, there are only, I mean, I only hit seven out of 10 shots at 500 yards. Okay. Uh, and, and I'll tell you, it's a difficult shot to make. I mean, when you're looking, I mean, the target is, 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 it's about the size, you know, I mean, it's a dog target. Uh, but when you're looking at it from 500 yards away, I mean, it's just a little speck. Whoever made the shot at Trump was probably a good six, 600 yards away because they had to be outside the venue. This was a professional hit. And, and, and by the way, I want you to understand, I mean, and, and this, is, this is what's so crazy about this. Trump has body armor on, okay? So they didn't go for a body shot. They went for a head shot, which means that the guy was even more professional than, than I. I mean, my God, this, this, this person was probably one of the best sharpshooters in the world. There's only, I mean, there's only a handful of people that can make this shot. Now, some Patsy's going to get arrested, just like uh, Oswald got arrested in, in, in 1963, you know. Uh, I, it, it, you know, do we really think that he killed Kennedy with a bullet that went in 16 different ways and, and, and shot Kennedy in the head? Oh, hell no. So what I'm telling you is somebody paid a lot of money. For one of the best sharpshooters in the world. And it's amazing. And by the way, when you're shooting from 600, 700 yards away, you know, that bullet, it's, it's a, it's, I mean, it takes a hell of a long time to figure out what the wind conditions are and everything. I mean, it's a freaking miracle that Trump is still alive. Uh, but I wanted to explain the logistics or the, 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 the magnitude of what just took place. So one of the best sharpshooters in the world, and by the way, if you ever watched some of the videos, I mean, I think the longest shot that I've ever seen was in Afghanistan, and uh, it was a Canadian sharpshooter, and he hit somebody from 2,000 yards away. And uh, that was a video that I saw on, on YouTube, and I thought, oh my God, I can't believe that that even could, could take place. But you know, as a hunter, if you're if you're if you're a hunter, okay, and you're shooting a deer, imagine shooting a deer from 600 yards away or 700 yards away. Now that there was a pop, pop, pop. By the way, and, and, and what I'm hearing is that the shot actually took place outside of the cameras. I you know I don't know. Let's get into a little bit of news before I. I because uh, i got to post this video breaking. Israel carried out another unprecedented massacre this morning and killed more than 70 civilians, including many children. The Israeli military used uh, American MK-84 dumb bombs to carry out several airstrikes on 
hundreds of tents and displaced families in the Al Mawasi west of Khan Yuris, killing 71 civilians and injuring uh, 289 uh, reported. So just got to get into a little bit of news. Um, and of course, I've got another video about Joe Biden uh, that'll go up. <laughs> uh, breaking fighter jets in Poland. A fighter jet in Poland has crashed. And so let's watch that video. Yeah, there you go. So that, that was that. And then, of course, the Ukrainian air defense in trouble um, under attack. Russian troops hit HIMARS rocket launchers ready to fire on Crimea. Ministry of Defense, Russian armed forces destroyed four HIMARS devices that were about to attack the precision strike. And, uh, of course, I'll have video about this. Uh, the targets hit. They attacked with precision weapons. Russian forces also hit the site of official meeting of the command staff of armed forces of Ukraine. The targets were hit. They destroyed four Hamas launchers. Launchers. Uh, I tell you, man. I, I, Matt Wallace. Elon Musk has announced a massive lawsuit after evidence was unearthed in Congress today that the government, media, and advertisers with Israeli ties are working together to censor free speech as well as throttle opinions. I, do you see what the Democrats are? Not only do they try to assassinate Trump, they're trying to censor our free speech. I mean, are you a Democrat? I tell you what, if you are, man, I just can't stand you, man. I can't stand you. But anyway, let's just keep going. They don't like using targeted attacks with a near monopoly on advertiser dollars. Do you support this move to sue them by Elon Musk? Can you imagine? All right, that's it for the video. Peace out. Stay free. Let's head to Iran now, where President-elect Masoud Pezeshkan waits to be inaugurated at the end of the month. He has released a self-titled document called Message to the New World, explaining his stance on a host of foreign policy issues. He has promised to pay special attention to deepening friendly relations with China and Russia. China and Russia have consistently stood by us during challenging times. We deeply value this friendship. Russia is a valued strategic ally and neighbor to Iran. I will continue to prioritize bilateral and multilateral cooperation with Russia, particularly within frameworks such as BRICS, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization and the Eurasia Economic Union. The president-elect has highlighted his intention to develop mutually beneficial relations with states in the global south. Regarding the war in Gaza, Bezeshkan has said his new government will take measures to stop the genocide, occupation and the war crimes there. He also stressed his readiness to actively support initiatives aimed at achieving peace in the Ukrainian conflict. And another key point was relations with the United States after the collapse of the nuclear deal. He noted that Iran entered the Joint Comprehensive Plan of, known, of Action, known as the JCPOA, in good faith and fully met its obligations. However, the U.S. withdrew from that agreement, reportedly causing hundreds of billions of dollars in damage to the Iranian economy. Pezeshkan criticized the U.S. for deliberately escalating tensions with Iran over its support of Israel, which has refused to sign the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty and illegally possessing a nuclear arsenal. Now, the nuclear deal was signed in 2015 after years of consultations between the five permanent UN Security Council member states, plus Iran and Germany, to ensure that Tehran would use atomic energy peacefully. However, in 2018, then U.S. President Donald Trump unilaterally withdrew from the treaty and reimposed sanctions on Iran. Other participants of the deal, uh, namely Russia and Iran, tried to restore the agreement, but were unable to. And we spoke with high-ranking Iranian official, and he said that the Iranian president-elect's position is clear. 
to develop a more multipolar world so that the U.S. can no longer apply its unilateral restrictions to independent countries. It can be uh, actually interpreted as a manifestation of the foreign policy of the next government of Iran. Uh, so he wanted to say that this new, uh, new world, in which a new world order is being shaped, in which the West is not the only and even the major player anymore, and in which coalitions like BRICS, SCO, and other coalitions are gaining momentum and gaining significance in the world. One thing is clear, if you want to win against the Americans, you need to insist on your uh, right policy and your right position. And that's what Iran is going to do. They did the maximum pressure campaign and they have put all the crippling sanctions that they could put on uh, Iran and um, even on other countries like Russia, for example. And they have failed to achieve their goal, which was to actually to cripple down the country. Because Americans are not trustworthy, and in 2015, we did that. We signed the JCPOA and we uh, actually implemented all the co commitments, but they did not uh, follow it. So Iran clearly knows that it cannot trust the Americans and the Westerners anymore. So because of that, uh, actually, uh, it's not going to bow down to any pressures. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician, Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.